I always forget to turn off my music. <laughs> oh, it's funny. And Kim, are you going to put that uh, meeting yeah. slide up? Let me pull it up. Sorry about that. Oh, no. no. I just yeah. know. Sorry. I'll pull it up now. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I mean, public, I'll start as soon no as public well. hearing items, I don't think. So I just kind of space. Oh, gotcha. Um, but here we go. Later. We might not need to, but if you want to do it, I'm going to share my, or yeah, I can't share my screen actually. Oh, so you, you should, should be able to now. now. Okay. So you're saying we don't really even have to because we don't have public meeting, public hearing, I mean? In the past, we haven't. Um, okay, that's but fine. We can just skip it. Robert, Kim, if nobody speaks up, then I think we're fine to skip it. Okay, okay. that's fine with me. That's my understanding as well. If we want to read it just in case, but I think because we have no public yeah. hearings, we should Great. be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. Sorry about that. So I should have prefaced that. Yeah, that's totally fine. I just, I didn't know if you were waiting for me or I was waiting for you. All right. So this is the Historic Preservation Commission for June 21st, 2021. And we will have a roll call. Commissioner Dunlap. Here. Commissioner Keller. Here. Commissioner Berg. Here. Commissioner Clemmy. Here. Chair Haley. Here. And then reviewing our agenda for this evening, which is pretty straightforward and simple. Um, are there any changes or additions? No, I'll move that we approve tonight's agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So our agenda is approved. Our approval of our minutes from our last meeting, May 17th, 2021. If there's no changes or comments on that. We can have a motion. I'll move to approve the minutes. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So our, our minutes are approved. Um, we have no public hearings, um, but if there's any public comments that are not on our agenda, let me look at our public. We have someone, so Leah is here from the Historic Com Historical Commission. Hi, Leah. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm here and if you guys have any questions about the historical commission or any comments or anything, just let me know. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for being here. All right. So our first item to discuss is our coloring book. So we have our subcommittee for the coloring book and I'll leave it to you guys. Okay. Hi, everybody. So Kim and Andrea and I have been talking about the coloring book. Um, we um, kind of both met in person and met virtually to talk about the three quotes or the three artists that we'd reached out to. Um, all three kind of put forward quotes and what they um, kind of would, how they'd approach uh, sketches of residential buildings, historic buildings. And we, the three of us, Andrew, Kim and I collaborate on um, two that we're going to reach out to, to um, kind of get further quotes, um, to kind of get some sample drawings, right, Kim, um, and go from there. So, and those I don't have in front of me, but those are Satya and I can't remember the other one. And Amy. And Amy, that's right. Um, so we also talked about um, how many of each type of drawing to include in the coloring book. And um, sorry, I don't make notes in front of me, but I think we're thinking four residential. And I did put together, I just shared with you, Kim, sorry, so late, but I did put together um, a couple of ideas from well, properties are already landmarked, trying to get some from different styles. We talked about trying to do that, get some so they're not all, for example, full Victorian, but 
Um, even though there's only four, have a different um, variety of styles in those residential. Uh, we also brainstorm some uh, commercial buildings. There's quite a few of those ones that you guys would all be familiar with. And then a few sort of agricultural um, business ones like um, the grain mill and perhaps kind of finding an image of a mine so to represent our mining history um, and things like that. And then we want to go over all of you with all of you what you thought about those selections um, as well as some questions on layout. Should it be horizontal? Should it be vertical? With the write-ups and things like that. So that's sort of where we are as an overview, but we wanted to bring all of that to you to the broader commission to kind of get some feedback before we move forward. Awesome. And did we have um, included in the quotes the original artist that kind of brought all this to us? Is he included in kind of the, not included as far as like discussion, but like is he included in who we might use? We, we did reach out to him in the initial okay. um, kind of call for a request for quotes. Um, he didn't respond with, with a bid, so he didn't want to move forward in that way. We heard from three others, but he was okay. a part of the original group in which we said, we're doing this project and we'd be looking for quotes. Okay. So he just chose not to participate. That's right. Yep. He just didn't, yep, he didn't want to bid on the project okay. or give a quote for the project. Okay. All right. That sounds good. So I think um, we have a couple things. I don't know. I think if we wanted to talk about the artists first a little bit more um, so and get a little bit of direction if there was anything that the full committee was feeling. Um, we did include a few just generally available um, examples of each artist as provided in the packet. So if anyone had any comments about that, we could talk about that. Otherwise, we could go into um, um, you know the buildings themselves. But I think um, just with the artists first seeing what everybody felt if you agreed with this kind of the subcommittee's direction any sort of comments like that i think the fact that you did choose the artist who had actually done a coloring book before uh, i think for the aurora cultural council or something like that i, th I think that's a plus uh, to have done that that kind of thing to have that experience and uh obviously a pretty diverse uh, group of artists you know, vying for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really pre pleased with the, the content that has been implied or suggested so far. It, it really takes it in a whole different direction or broadens it. And I, I think that's all good. Uh, yeah. And I think if I may just step in for one more moment, the only other clarifying piece I want to be clear about, it was only became clear to me more when I was doing more research to write the packet that, so the, the artist um, Satya, she has, she's on a commission and was a part of creating a, another coloring book, oh. but it doesn't appear she provided any art for it. So it just in oh. the air of transparency, I just want to make that clear. Certainly mm -hmm. we have her quote and she is an artist herself, but just to make that clear, I know I might have not before because I wasn't sure until I did a little more yeah. research. So just want to make sure I'm transparent. I thought there was something in her quote about um, editing the drawings. Well, maybe she did that without having done it before that the drawings would be edited to a point they could be used as elements of a coloring book. Yeah. Maybe you suggested that in the bid. Okay. Yeah, just looking back at the notes, um, the bid that Satya bit did, and she said, sorry, I just lost it again. Um, she'll do up to two revisions per image if needed. Mm -hmm. You know, I think when we, when our committee talked, our hope was that if we get um, so at least one or two initial sketches, we kind of see the direction they're going, give some feedback, and most likely we're hoping that would be where the revisions might take place in that initial phase to kind of just clarify what exactly we're looking for. Um, Satya did, we were most interested in her, she also indicated she'd come to Louisville for a certain amount of time and walk around and look at the houses, you know, different mm -hmm. angles, things like that. So we just kind of get more one-on-one -on -one time with her at the actual structures which will also, also help kind of verbally clarify what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tricky because their style is fairly similar to each other, mm -hmm. but um, obviously not like line drawings like a coloring book would be. So um, 
So yeah, I think that next step will be interesting just to see kind of how they do it. Yeah, that's cool. Well, and the fact that she, even if she wasn't the artist in the one before, she understands the process. Cool. And that was exactly. pretty clear in her documentation, right? That she's right. like, there's going to be revisions. I need to visit. Like, she, it's kind of like she already worked through the kinks from our point of view. And now she's there, you know, so that totally that made it more comfortable, I think. Mm -hmm. um, at least for me, why it seemed like, yeah, kind of knew what was going on and. And having looked, so I just happened to um, be in Boulder today at the Boulder bookstore and I was, um, I saw the Boulder coloring book in there, oh. in, you know, because I hadn't really gotten to get into Louisville to see it during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I hadn't gone in to see it. And when I was looking at it today, I was like, oh yeah, I could see where, like, we really, I think as you know, for this project, we have to be pretty clear what age group we're targeting. Because mm, right. I felt like that book, um, the line drawings were very detailed, right? Mm -hmm. Like it, it included the bricks, right? And it included scallops. So a kid would have to be really, have really fine motor skills to do it. So I looked at it, I was like, yeah, it's and the writing was, I was like, oh, it's a little bit more uh, an adult oriented, which is fine. I, I'm not, a, you know, but I think we do need to be clear, like, who are we trying to target? Um, right. What audience are we trying to capture um, so that we can make sure that the artist is clear on that? Because, um, again, like too many lines, um, it's going to make it hard for a kid but perfect for an adult, you know? So um, I think we kind of need to visit that too. Um, who do we think is going to use this? Um, do you think it would be possible to do a variety? Say a red barn is a very simple line drawing and uh, the, the art center is uh, pretty complex and, and have both. Yeah, I actually thought of that. I was talking to a friend today and I was like, oh, it, it, in some ways it'd be cool to have like, you know, the, like the coloring book opens this way, right? And it's got a series of drawings for maybe adults. And then, you know, you can take a book and you can flip it over and then you can go the other, you know, flip it over and then there's oh. some ones for kids, you know? But I was like, no, that might be too complicated for our project. But yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It might be nice to include, you know, yeah. maybe different levels or something. Um, I think it's worthwhile to consider as well because we do own or will own um, the rights to these images that can then be right. used, you know, again and again for different purposes. So it might be worthwhile for some of those commercial structures right at the art center to have them be a bit more sophisticated for other uses. Right. Whereas the, you know, the residential ones right in the red barn could be more straightforward because probably wouldn't yeah. have a whole lot of other use mm -hmm. as a, as a drawing, as a sketch. Right. Of that. Good point. Yeah. Good um, point. Right. And you know, the drawing craze a few years ago, is probably still going on. Um, certainly there's, tweens who still and teens who still like to color and adults who like yeah, to color. Right. Um, so yeah, the audience could be a good number of people. So what, yeah. so what do we, what do we think? That's kind of a lot to think about. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking too, like it might be really detailed, but like for bricks, like they don't have to color each one in a, so a kid could just kind of color all the bricks. Right. Right. You know, we could try to, and maybe we just select houses that could, um, or structures that could be more, uh, I don't know, like just to where the same, someone could be as detailed or as broad as they wanted in coloring it. Yeah. Yes, is my point, you know, where, because right. um, yeah, some of the coloring books, I mean, like they're very, like you have to kind of do every single one. Structures are a little different. And I, just because they're, they are just kind of 
um, more of the same material and that kind of thing. So yeah, that might, I think that would be interesting as we look at some of the designs that come through as far as pot potential and maybe just like a good talking point when we do meet the artists of like, here's something we're considering, like, you know, can you give us guidelines as to how to make it kind of a good for a broader range of color yeah. colors color. <laughs> artists yeah <laughs> but yeah because that's a good point like we want it to to be as useful as possible and to get as many people using it as possible but we also don't want to you know make it too simplistic or too complicated so that is tricky right Okay, well, that's something good to keep in mind as we talk to which author, which art, whatever artists we go forward mm -hmm. with, um, mm -hmm. and considering as a committee. Um, but it sounds like we're at least leaning towards having a variety mm -hmm. um, yeah. um, in terms of sophistication. Yeah. Okay. And I know one thing we talked about too was um, we keep talking about it in terms of a coloring book, but we might, you know, we may may, may very easily just pull one or a few of these at a time. So if we're getting 15 images, you know, we might just say, let's do, you know, five that are much more simple mm -hmm. and right. 10 that are more complicated. We can put, if we ever wanna make a color, we can put them all in there. But if we are dealing with just kids, we can pull some of the simpler ones. If we're dealing with just adults, you know, like right. maybe that's an easy way to do it too, is just have a variety um, where we're not doing the same structure simple and complicated we're just right. having some structures that are more complicated and some that are simpler so yeah okay good thank you mm -hmm. so and kim maybe you can help us out here but um we should probably talk about the different structures that we were thinking about and um so the kim do you want me to handle this or andrea or I'm happy to. Either way, um, if you'd like to, and then I can pull up something though to prep. Would you like to see the um, the table with the list that we talked about already or mm -hmm. jump right into the residential discussion with Let's your list? The table, the table first. Okay, I'll pull that up. Okay. Okay, so these are, again, the three sort of areas that we came up with for properties. And we'd love your feedback, you know, if there's things we've overlooked or perhaps shouldn't be on here. Um, but for agricultural and industrial, we're thinking the Red Barn that's near Community Park. Um, I know that park's heavily used, not just as a playground, um, you know, picnic area, but also for things like the summers, Thursday nights, music and things like that. So there's a lot of, you know, families kids, young adults going in and out of there. So the Red Barn we thought would be a good option. Um, so our only, um, so our most agricultural. Um, kind of jumping down to number three, also the Grain Mill, um, which uh, is right downtown near Lucky Pie and Sweet Cow. Um, did I do that right? I always mix those up. And a lot of kids know that structure as well. There's a climbing gym right there. So that's pretty um, common or recognizable to many residents. And then, then a mine, the Acme mine. So I think we were thinking of working with Bridget perhaps to find sort of images, old images of that, because obviously there's nothing there now that would be recognizable to kids. But students in BVSD schools here in fourth grade do um, a big Colorado history unit and they learn quite a bit about the mining history. They do a field trip to the museum. They all see the miner downtown. And you know, there's a lot of focus on our mining history in Louisville and Colorado. So we figured if we had some sort of historic um, drawing of a mine, then that would resonate with residents, kids and adult alike. Mm -hmm. And I guess my question too is, do we want these to be landmarked properties or are we open to not having having ones that are not landmarked? So for the residential, we want to make sure they were landmarked. And most, I think, most if not all, and you guys can help me with this, of these sort of commercial business, I think, are landmarked. The agricultural industrial, um, I don't know if those are landmarked, but what do we feel about that? 
with requiring them to be. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure if we could find any right. industrial that are landmarked. So is the Methodist Church landmarked? No, not yet. So that might be a national, but I don't think it's a local. Um, right. So that one's actually not, and we did landmark the church on Pine though, right? Is that one landmarked? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's up for discussion. Um, the Methodist Church is still an actual like working church. So that might be a reason to go ahead and keep it as on the list, but it's not actually landmarked either. So, um, and the state mercantile that did that we did landmark that is that right? It's we, a national register. Okay, so that one's not actually landmarked either. For some reason, I thought that was coming or had come, but um, and then Moxie is not. They might at some point, but they're not. So, um, the seven four twenty four through twenty eight are proposed, right? But they're not landmarked yet. Right. You you all saw them, I believe, was two months ago for the probable cause. So they're in that they're in that tract, but not yet. Yeah. yeah. My take would be that places don't have to be landmarked, but they they really do need to be crowd pleasers that people would want to color, mm -hmm. uh, that that would just contribute to uh, the interest in the uh, preservation of the whole town. Right. And Huckleberry, I think, is also a national register. It's not actually landmarked either. Mm -hmm. So. And that was sort of the. Um, um, the methodology that the subcommittee talked about in terms of um, at least the agricultural and industrial or I'm sorry, mm -hmm. non-residential and the agricultural in terms of we were thinking of a few things. Are they relatively recognizable? And then as you've all touched on a little bit, our at least our view was how do we maybe try to get some variety? So a good example mm -hmm. would be maybe 72428 is sort of an art deco style that we see in downtown which isn't as popular as maybe some of our other styles so you know we could certainly if you want to have stricter definitions we kind of went away from that just for these groups since there was a little bit more um, choice if you will and then a style you know kind of selections we could do but we can make these kind of however we like these were our sort of run um, and you can see we have the focus of non-residential a lot being in the downtown area since Again, we figure that's where a lot of people might spend their time with their families together. And so they might recognize those buildings. So that's sort of where we're coming from. So if, yeah, seeing if you, what you guys felt like and, and, and if you agree or had any sort of, well, we'd really miss this one, we'd like to see that. So that's kind of where we're coming from. Totally. Well, and since we're also doing write-ups, I'm also thinking, I mean, it, I mean, not really for the kids, but, you know, we'll obviously have a blurb about our historic preservation tax and our program, right? But I think that might be a good opportunity to explain, like, this is a, you know, there's the National Register, but we're also doing this as a city, mm -hmm. right? So we could note, you know, on properties like this is a National Historic Registered Property. This is a Louisville landmark, you know, we could do right. that just to make it clear, you know. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I guess I had like for me, like I I had a question kind of about um, like. Well, specifically the Rex Theater, right? Because it doesn't really, doesn't really mm -hmm. look like a theater anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So that was one that I was kind of, mm, right? Especially when you compare it to something like the Mayan in Denver or the Boulder Theater. Like mm -hmm. they still look like theaters. They're still used as theaters. Um, so that one I was kind of like, oh, yeah, that'd be cool to include. Mm -hmm. You know, that people think about, yeah, mo going to the motion picture shows, right, or the movies, you know, that's a long standing tradition in towns and a, you know, an important, it's always an important structure. Um, right. So, and then ours has changed over time, mm -hmm. right? It didn't maintain itself. So, you know, 
Yeah. I think that's so a good. Can we show a picture of how it used to look and then how it look, you know, what it's used now to kind of show, you know, change or just take it off the list altogether or, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we could spend a lot of time debating this stuff. Right. And I think, <laughs> yeah. And I think the thought for some of these was that we'll, you know, for both the write ups, certainly the write ups, Bridget at the library, yeah. or I'm sorry, at the museum, this is a wealth of information. You know, it's right. really, I think, just more editing what's already there on most right. of these properties and the residential ones we pick as well since they're already landmarked. And she also, the museum has pictures, all of these um, non-residential, they're historic, you know, what they looked like um, in, yeah. history or in the recent past. So the, I think the thought was that we kind of pull from some of those historic ones and find some that's still recognizable to current residents that, oh, this is what it used to look like. It was a theater. Yeah. Oh, how cool this was a theater. It's not anymore, but look, we yeah. still kind of maintained here for us. So that's where we kind of want some feedback, right? Like Andrew is indicating, like some of these, yeah. some of these change too much, or like we already need drawings. Do we go back to it? You know, kind of go back to a time period before now where they're more historic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think Andrew makes a good point, though. That's that's the one uh, structure listed there that really isn't uh, very accurate historically, where all the others are. We also have the what was the original Waterloo? I can't remember the address on that, but that's been landmarked since. Yeah, that's true. And that's has, a, a lot more. Finished? I guess it has finished. Yeah. So if I mean, obviously, it's not a theater like that's the cool thing about the Rex Theater is it's actually a kind of a different style building. Um, but it does kind of show a little more of the Kind of what we want our program to look like more but mm -hmm. um just as an option like that could be um yeah i think acme mine and green elevator are good um and the font the barn is another one that's not landmarked but it definitely is iconic um and i think and i don't know if that's on the national register either but I think it is really important that if we include, so I guess this is my like trying to figure it out piece of, um, so we're doing outreach for our program, which is really an advertisement for a program. And so I guess I just, I'm like, do we, should we use this as a way to like, kind of puff up our like what we've done versus having to spend a time and energy explaining like oh well that's actually a national historic yeah. it's not landmarked it's and then it just gets confusing it's like what does that mean um so that's my or the confusion of someone saying oh that's great. These are all like the mercantile and the Methodist church and the red barn. They're all landmark. They're all protected and they're not. Right, yeah. um, so I just, that's where my thinking is. I just want to make sure that we're using this as like to be the most effective um, to, to promote our and to show what we've done and also not to cause confusion or a false sense of security of like, oh, Huckleberry is safe and you know right. all these things are are good because we've taken care of them in our in our landmarking and we haven't so um so that's my hang up with using ones that aren't landmarked but that's just my personal right i think i think that's a really valid point um because um i was looking at residential ones and looking at the different time periods and trying to try to you know get um, some options from each era and it was it was hard I mean quite honestly there were um, there's I was going back to something I got when I did my training they had all these recommended houses to be landmarked and that does cover the, the full scope of architectural eras in Louisville and there are certainly eras that like do not have a lot of options that are landmarked like almost like very little if, if not if any so um, right, so I think we definitely, in my opinion, want to use this 
is a way to show people what has been landmarked and take pride in that, um, as well as to definitely encourage people to landmark more, lest these things disappear. So I don't know how we, yeah, like bridge that gap with like right. residential, we can do all landmarks. Um, with some of these commercial ones, right? Like, because some people will, if we put it in there, you know, we could say we'll put something in there in writing, like some of these are landmarks, we want these to be preserved, we have to, you know, um, we have this tax that pays for this, that's great, and you can landmark your home and information on that, but the reality is some people will never read that, they'll just go right to the drawings, they'll right. see the preservation, they'll see the drawings, they'll think it's all preserved. Yeah. So, yeah. right, so I don't know, kind of what we do about that. <laughs> right. So we could, I mean, we could just do all landmark ones, but that would probably greatly reduce the number of commercial buildings, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe that also proves our point because that's been one of our biggest pieces is like we don't have like a lot of our beloved commercial properties aren't landmarked and maybe that's kind of our statement of saying this is all we have like this is these are the only coloring book pages we can do of our commercial because this these are the only ones that we have you know so yeah doesn't a, a national um, landmark uh, have some restrictions i mean doesn't it uh it, it puts probably some uh restrictions against somebody buying it and tearing it down don't isn't don't they i guess i never uh thought through that but yeah that's a good question so it's actually less than you think when it's a national register and it's individually uh -huh. landmarked on the national register there actually isn't much sort of teeth if you will okay. it's really comes with the local landmarking where you get some of mm -hmm. those more protection sort of aspects national uh, register districts are a little different but by and large if you're just looking at an individual national register property mm -hmm. um, you get a lot more protection out of a local landmark if that makes okay. sense i guess we could always point out that our program interlocks with the state program, which interlocks with the Department of Interior, you know, national program, and that's goodness. And uh, I don't know, maybe separately we need to uh, work a little harder to get those locally landmarked and protected. Mm -hmm. Although we could get into too much depth where we probably want this to go to a couple or three paragraphs. You know, the, right. the description of the program. And I, and I think to Chrissy's point, like, a lot of people aren't picking up these images or this book or however we end up putting it out. They're not picking it up necessarily for the information as much as they are for the activity. So they're not necessarily going to read through every right. single word, especially if it gets um, kind of heady with like the national and the breakdown and the history of, of like the programming and all that kind of stuff. Like there, there's a lot of people that wouldn't even so just be a lot of time of our of ours spent generating that and then kind of maybe not even getting our point across to people because they don't really care. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I think it's a good discussion, like when we're handing out the coloring books, you know, like that's a discussion we can have as far as, you know, these are, if you notice, like we don't have a lot of commercial or here's a difference between national and local like those are the conversations I think that goes a lot farther with people than just giving them something to read yeah and that's the point of this too is it's not something we just pass out and you know let it let it do its thing but it's a it's generating conversation and interaction and education that way so yeah um Yeah, I mean, it is tricky, right? Because we are kind of blurring the lines. But yeah, I mean, now that you bring it up, Chair Haley, it is like, we, we're we very lucky in our town. We not, not only do we have a great museum and historic commission, we have an historic preservation commission who has a different mission and an out, a different outreach need that we're trying to address with this. Um, whereas if the historic commission was doing this coloring book, then yeah, like talk about Louisville right. history, all the important stuff and blah, 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 blah. Um, but if I if this really is like we're spending historic preservation dollars, mm -hmm. not general historic commission funds or city funds, right? Like, yeah, if it's really an outreach tool, then 
totally it needs to be um maybe maybe we have the same number of drawings but then that means we need to have more residential and less you know the barn's awesome and the my the um we could uh we could do the minor cabins hmm. um, so we could do the minor cabins great idea on the grain mill right mm -hmm. um and we and could do we could also do the mining cabins with the mine, you know, like we could do them both right. on the same page where we, right. and we do have, our money did pay for the Acme mine, like little interpretive thing on Hutchinson. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a great idea because that's, that's totally our mining and that's something we have absolutely landmarked and been a part of. So that's a great idea. Um. So that being said, I mean, the another thing we could consider is, um, I mean, we've landmarked, do we, we landmarked the Blue Parrot sign and the Standard Oil sign, right? Those signs have been. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, the Blue Parrot would be fun. Yeah, that that's might, interesting. Yeah. That might, might be a little weird. I don't know. <laughs> and I, I don't know, but but yeah, if we're sticking to landmarks, I mean, there are a few other mm -hmm. things we could do. Um, I mean, I guess yeah, I guess I am kind of sold now that yeah, this is an outreach advertising the thing, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe we should stick to more things that are landmarked and local right the local ones but i know like um so the hospital for instance that's one of the structures i was going to recommend and it's yeah, a residential yep it's also you know it used to be um yeah commercial. there's also um let's see which one this one is there was also one that used to be a grocery store on lafarge um oh yeah the pier is it the pearson yeah, that could, yeah. And so that's a. I don't remember what address that is. Um, and Yoga Junction, that's another landmark. That's a commercial okay. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great um, commercial one. Uh, Linda, if you come across the address of the Lafarge one, that's a grocery, just let me know. I will. That's what I'm going back to in the, um, you know, the slideshow of what's landmarked. Yeah. So, yeah. So the museum is on the list and the, yeah, I'm going through the list too here. Um, and there is um, kind of one that I had picked out for residential. It does look a little bit more like a farmhouse. So, um, let's see, I'm trying to get to the kind of cruising through so the list. I'm looking. At the landmark map, there's the Steinbaugh house, which is 945 front. Mm -hmm. So that right. is, um, it was a home, a blacksmith shop, hardware store. Mm -hmm. No. It's the Parks and Rec, right? Yeah, that, yeah the Pavilion. That's actually one of the oldest, I think that's like our oldest house or something. Yeah, it's his. That's hmm. on Main, Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said yeah. 945 front, I think. 945 front. Yeah, that's oh, right. Yeah, it's on the, the one up front. The, the, the legal center. office. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the legal Pier office. The Pearson store, 927 Main. So that's on the map, you know, on the, you know, you can click through the list. Mm -hmm. Um. So that would that would be uh it, I mean yeah. it it looks quite a bit like the Lewis I mean it looks a lot like the museum right 
Mm -hmm. um so yeah, i don't know style. a variety there but um but if we're looking for more commercial it's an option yeah yeah you could always add another residence oh yeah no we can i we can get to 15 i i don't yeah, yeah there's I, right and there is the um the Nucci house on 11 16 lafarge that's a brick house so that's yeah. as far as being a brick yeah. And then, yeah, Louisville Hospital was on my list, too, for yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 That's a really good one. Yep. And then the Thomas Decker House, the 733 Pine. That might be interesting just because it's everyone sees it just because it's on Pine. Yeah, I picked one of the Decker houses, too. Yeah. You do the um, Agatha Decker or the Joseph Decker. I agree. Those are the Pine Street. Yeah. Um, I also really liked, I know we've kind of veered over to the residential now. I really liked, um, it's number 22, um, the, the Restus. Oh, that's totally. The so Restus house. Because mm -hmm. it really looks, uh, I don't know, it just had a different shape. It looked. Right. Well, I was going to say, too, this is um, Jean Morgan's house, who she's the one that really, like, she pioneered getting the miners' cabins for us. Like, she's basically oh. single-handedly taking care of them. And this was a miners' cabin, too. Yeah. And so I think I was going to, this was one of my other recommendations, was yeah. she has a beautiful garden in the summer or in the spring. It's probably good right now. Um like a Zurich garden. And so that would be really pretty for the coloring book also, just as far as, um, just cause the house is so simple, but maybe that yeah. would be something that could be incorporated. Anyway, that's a great one. So Very have good. we, oh. have we kind of decided then that we want to stick to just landmarked ones? It seems like we do. Is anyone not in favor of that? I, I wouldn't, uh make it that fine a distinction, especially on some of those commercial and national properties. I mean, if they're nationally landmarked, you're, you're including them, right? Well, we're actually not because they're not as protected. Well, I mean, you, you're, you're not going to not include 740 front, or I guess that is landmark. That one's landmarks. Yeah. yeah or uh, the Red Barn or, um, yeah, the, the mines obviously are not landmarked if you wanted to uh, include a mine right and that's what we were talking about was including the miners cabin with the mine um mm -hmm. that would because those are landmarks that would just kind of yeah. combine all of our mining history bear, bear in mind if you're using that walking map uh, mm -hmm. that that's probably four years out of date we have a, a lot right. of uh, landmarks yeah, since then. other ones mm -hmm. right I was looking more at the uh, historic context reports, uh, and it didn't include things that were just landmarked. But one thing that has been that is uh, would look like a nice uh, structure to color would be uh, that 601 Lincoln. that's in sort of state of being rebuilt right now. That's the one that had the uh, controversial controversy, conservation easement um, done with it. Anyway. It's blue. Yeah. Gingerbread. All right. Yeah. So just to, to jump in with what you guys had mentioned, um, looking at only landmarked and then some of the the hospital, which is now residential, 1116 Lafarge the Decker House and 1131 Spruce. We're actually at 14 if you include the signs as well. That is including both signs. So I know you weren't exactly talking about that, but as I was writing, so that would be, you know, 809 Main, um, 927, um, 816 Main is also um, landmarked on the list. So that would actually be 15. I didn't write that down yet. So that the only reason I bring that up is that is something to think about is we could easily get to 15 for um for keeping it with just all landmarks included all right. so i just that's the only reason i wanted to step in and i see rob has jumped in too yeah i just wanted to clarify the standard oil sign is is not landmarked it was designated an iconic sign 
which okay. it's not, so it's not a protected sign, but it received a, it allows it to maintain, even though it's non-conforming to the zoning okay. by having okay. that designation, but it's not protected. Um, the empire building and sign are landmarked. Oh, okay. So that's the something. Sign. Yeah. The sign is included with the landmark. Yep. That's, a, that's great. Okay. That's a good one. That's really good. So it sounds like if we were to swap out some of the ones, some of the commercial from our initial list, we could, you know, keeping with the number, we had, we had the most in the commercial. Um, and we certainly could add more residential and not have that many commercial, but we could remove some of the ones that were not landmarked and add in quite a few, like Empire, the Steinbaugh mm -hmm. house, and um, the house in Lafarge, it was a grocery, and Yoga Junction. So mm -hmm. sounds like we're, we're yeah. kind of getting there with keeping a good number that are easily, because I think the whole goal with the commercial ones is they're more recognizable to more people. Mm -hmm. Right, right, absolutely. Um, and also the Church on Pine, that's another one. Right, so that is now residential, but it still looks like a church and it's going to, we know, maintain right. the church. So if the Methodist one isn't landmarked, then we could right. do that one. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's, it's officially landmarked, right? That doesn't I have to go to city council. It already went through city council. That That's correct. It's landmarked and they've signed their agreement. Okay. So every, yeah, it's another thing to remember is until they sign their agreement, it's not landmarked. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, and that's a very prominent... Um, one on yeah on yeah. pine yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep okay so there's no way that uh, church on pine could not move forward it, it's had so many uh starts and stops but I, it, it's, yeah. yeah the renovation may not move forward there's no guarantee that they'll yeah renovate it but it is landmarked okay yeah. okay done okay mm. um i had a few more residential that I thought were sort of interesting. Yeah. I think if Kim, are you keeping, I wasn't keeping track of the residential ones we thrown out. Are we kind of fully ready to go to those? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. I have three screens, so I couldn't find my mouse to unmute. <laughs> yes, so we currently, as you've discussed, do have, I have four residential listed, um, which, um, don't necessarily all match up with the ones you had sent, which is what the screen I'm sharing. So yeah, we could certainly talk about these if you wish. Um, but I did I did note four. So it's you know it's up to how you guys would like to proceed there. So just numbers wise. Yeah, and Kim's just sharing something that I threw together because I was just trying to again go with what the committee talked about, trying to keep some in eras. And it wasn't so much as saying these are the ones I want, is like trying to find ones that were landmarked to put in different eras to see if we're missing some or like, you know, maybe we're going to eliminate. Um, so. Yeah, those are good. And there were more on the, you know, on the walking tour on the slideshow. Oh yeah. Yeah. And some like these here, I couldn't tell what architectural style they were. They're not, mm -hmm. not they weren't labeled and they could, I thought, I wasn't sure if they're like craftsmen or um, cottage. They would all be labeled in that uh, historic context report, I think. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. Yeah, again, I would just also include kind of um, the more mm, mine looking one. Yeah, um, I agree. Yep. Num yeah, the rest is Isn't Morgan it? House on Spruce. Um, but yeah, I, mm -hmm. to, uh, okay. it, 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 an example of each one of these. Because how many is this right here? Is there a I'm not sure. I just sort of put them together. But again, there's, you know, there's three or so options or four from the bungalow craftsmen, you know, a couple from the Victorian um, sort of looks. So we don't need that many. We could certainly eliminate some of these. Right. Just kind of, wanna, kind of see what we had. And then for other, like the national style, we don't have any. There's none that are landmark in that style, which is really unfortunate. Um, it, but again, the slideshow doesn't have the last couple of years. So I thought maybe you all being on the committee would 
know of like these national folk house. Um, maybe there are some that are landmark. We just I just don't know of those. Yeah, because we definitely need to look through the the latest last few years just to see what those were like as far as style. Um, the Romeo house is an interesting one too because it's stone like that's it's not brick and it's not wood so it's a different material so that's really an interesting one too. Is right. that the one on Garfield? Oh yeah, Garfield. Right. It's mm -hmm. on so well. Like the front really looks quite historic. Yeah. Um I don't know how fun that is to color. <laughs> but right. That's, what that's like, like it's brown. Oh, like, yeah. When it's painted white, I'm like, oh man, that's not fun. <laughs> they can make whatever color they want. Yeah. Um but yeah. That recently landmark house is part of the cluster of three with the two on Pine Street that are almost identical. It was built by the same uh, builder as the one on Lafarge, something like 643, where we moved in the new house from 1201 Lincoln. That one there um, is, is recently enough landmarked. It wouldn't be on the uh, walking tour map, but it's always a nice house to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to color. I don't yep. remember the exact number. And, and Gary, you mentioned the 601 Lincoln. I think that's a great option as well. It's not, so it wasn't on the landmark, the slideshow, but is it landmarked now? Yeah, well, it, we did a, a conservation easement. It was a, conservation it was a little easement. different mechanism. That's the only thing I'm hesitant to draw any attention to that. <laughs> and that, that, yeah. was never fi that was never finalized. That uh, it has not got, they did not, so far, I've not chosen to take that forward to city council. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not anything now. Okay. It's too okay. Bad. Well, scratch that thought. Yeah. I was. I just got that idea from the uh, that context report. That does yeah. have a lot of information. That's great. There's so much detail. It'd be super fun to color. Yeah. It's a great one. But that one on Lafarge at the corner of uh, Lafarge and Pine, uh, mm -hmm. that that one is recently landmarked. I, I always like that one. Yep. So does this give you guys enough direction as far as, I don't know that any of us are, well, I think the hospital and the racist, racist Morgan house are probably my two, like, and the mining cabins. I think the miners cabins, I think those are my, like, important ones. Um, does anyone else? feel strongly about any specific structure or just to give kind of a help in narrowing down any of them. Would that be helpful, Chrissy, just to... Yeah, so yeah, that's very helpful. So that's kind of what, what you know, again, we can kind of pick yeah. these and give them to you, but um, sounds like generally the committee is okay with us just picking some ones that are landmark that represent different styles. But it is very helpful to hear if there's ones you feel strongly about. So yes, it's very helpful, Linda. So if anybody yeah. else has others they feel strongly about, they haven't heard from about yet, or heard from us yet, that'd be great. You know, it sounds like we're having kind of a general discussion and we'll get to more detail on things like the, the description of our program and how it fits into landmarks and all that. And uh, going back to the training that the guy did from the uh, city attorney's office last month uh, that he really wouldn't have much problem with us discussing these sort of things uh, and outside of the subcommittee of two uh, that these are not uh, quasi-judicial discussions so right. if you put down more than 15 uh, structures there and gave people a chance to uh, you know walk around and you know, think, see what they think, uh, that that would probably be okay, don't you think? Okay. Other than not being concise, I guess, for the standpoint of the artist. Yep. And the only thing I would just caution that if, you know, a group of you wanted to go, we would just have to be careful of that. But certainly individually, you know, that's something that would be different from, from sort of sunshine laws or, or making sure we noticed it if it were 
group of you all wanting to go together, but again, just walking around, certainly that's no problem. Just want to make sure. Well, there might be enough discussion like this that that, that guy, I can't remember his name uh, from the office, but who gave us the, uh, the talk last month, he, he suggested that if we have any questions about things like that to pose a question to him, maybe we should, uh, since this is not, none of these are quasi-judicial decisions uh, to make sure that just in general, uh, they're okay with us discussing things like this. Because that, that text we were talking about too, uh, yeah, we may want to edit it uh, with each other's help. So I just want to make sure we give you all good advice on open meetings. Um, you are certainly welcome, like Kim said, individually to look at things. You can also talk individually in groups of two. You cannot talk in groups of three. You cannot, even on non-quasi-judicial items, you can't have reply all email discussions. Those are all violations of the open meetings law just to be clear. So um, there's, there's a way to have a discussion, I think, and to interact and, re, and I guess, uh, research and review. But I think anything, um, you know, making final decisions and coming back to the group is also important um, once you've done all your research and had discussions and all of that. So I'm happy to have to um, answer any questions or provide any guidance on that. I think, I think, and we might be saying the same thing. I just want to make sure it's clear what the limitations are on that. I thought he was making a pretty clear statement, though, that um, on things where we're, we're not impacting anybody, uh, that we probably we we probably could talk about things as we did at the joint meeting we had with the city council and the uh, historic <laughs> preservation yeah. commission, and absolutely and invited us to for an yeah. opinion. So that joint session, that was a public meeting. So the public was invited to that meeting that was your joint session. So yeah, you, you, you absolutely could talk as a group. We just need to publicly notice the meeting. Um, and then you can talk about anything you want that's on that agenda. And then, you know, we do have stricter requirements within the city than legal, you know, your baseline legal requirements. We have a little bit, you know, higher level of, um, you know, within our charter about open meetings and things like that. So, I mean, give, give me an example of what you would like to do and we can definitely test it and make sure that it's okay to. Uh, an um, example, after we move forward and we get some preliminary drawings and some preliminary text and layout, would we be able to review it? I mean, we could. Yes, I, yes you could review it. Do you mean review it like email it to everybody and ask everybody to reply email with comments that I wasn't was looking at the mechanism so much but if oh, only, yeah. if our only okay. mechanism is to look at it once a month uh that is not <clears throat> too helpful okay well if you want to give an example of the mechanism so i'm concerned about the mechanism because that's how you get a foul of the open meetings our open meeting standards so if you decide how you want to review it in between meetings um, we can give guidance on that. So I think I think um, Kim could email all of us in like a blind copy, and we could put any like any comments that we have on it. In the meantime, we can respond to Kim, and she can, and then we could. But we can't discuss it unless we, if we want to have a special meeting, we could call a special meeting if we feel like we need a little more urgency. We can do that. But I think. One of the things to think about too is it seems like we could just talk about it and it's not it doesn't affect the public, but the problem is is that we are one spending our taxpayer money on this and we're choosing properties landmark properties to use so it's very it could hypothetically someone in the public could actually want to hear this discussion and be and have an opinion about something we left out or they want to they just want to know. And so that's where the public or the like being in a public meeting is really important is we just have to have complete transparency where anything that we discuss. Um, so even though it's not a hearing, we're not um, doing anything like quasi judicial as far as a public hearing, but we are still doing something that affects taxpayer money and choosing something that's going to go out to the public. So 
chances are no one would actually have an opinion of what we're including, but we can't assume that. We have to we have to allow everyone to know everything that we're talking about at any given point. So, so if, can we or can we not? The subcommittee, Kim, Chrissy, and I come up with a list, Kim emails it, and we say, you have to have decided if this is list is like yeah. walk around, figure it out, because we need to move on this. We need to make a decision in July. Otherwise, this is going to take right. No, we'll, we'll be here another year before we get this coloring book done. Right. So I and maybe Rob, you know, I think I think we can all say yes, this looks good or no, this list, we need to add something in the meantime. I don't think we have to wait till July to like discuss the list again. Is that correct? Or do we need uh, public like this is what we're choosing? Yeah, I mean yeah, so the subcommittee to get if I understand correctly, the subcommittee could get together. Is that what you're talking about? And then make a final list. And then you could, we could, the subcommittee can send that to the rest of the commission. Um, you know, that's gonna take a little bit of time and then you send it to the commission. And then the best thing to do is to, at your meeting next month is you, everybody's had time to review it. The subcommittee sent the final list and then you make a final decision at your, next, at your meeting next month okay. based on the input that you okay. all looked at. Um, the subcommittee can absolutely meet and discuss as much as they want. Right. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, if you like, if somebody has a question, um, you can talk to each other individually. If you have questions, um, you know, there's some, there's a spirit of the openness, right? So you don't want to use it as a loophole, but you know, like if Linda had a question about the subcommittee's list, she could call Chrissy and be like, Hey, I have a question about this. And you guys could have an individual conversation about that. Okay. Um, but you know, you're not, it's not, you're not supposed to be having this ongoing dialogue amongst the commission for all the reasons that Linda articulated. Right. Right. Okay. We can use Kim as our liaison yes. between yep. everyone. So if we, you know, mm -hmm. if we want to give all of our opinions and all of the properties that we think are important to Kim or to Chrissy or to Andrea individually, like that's fine. But, um, and then Kim can compile it and all that kind of stuff. Yes. It's fun to keep yep. Kim in the loop just so that she knows what's all going on. But the main thing is we just can't have a dis like an open discussion unless we feel like we need to have, you know, a, a meeting before July. Like we can schedule a separate meeting, but we can't discuss it as right. this five of us. Right. So does that make sense? So I felt like the though the guy from the city attorney's office last month ended up with giving a little more liberal interpretation of that. And would it be possible just to ask him how we might approach this? Um, the only the only liberal part I heard from him was that I went and I don't I don't know that's true, <laughs> but the only thing I understood was he said if we wanted to meet and hang out and not talk about anything commission related, that that would be okay. That was the only liberal thing I understood. Um, and even that is maybe questionable just because someone in the community could question that, you know, it's just. Yeah, yeah. where that comes up is if there's a social event, the city or otherwise that the city puts on or just a private social event and there's three or four or five of you doesn't mean you can't talk to each other, but you shouldn't be talking about the business to the commission. Yeah. The last time we um, did a plaque ceremony, which was a house, actually a pretty good one for inclusion, was it about 10th and Main? Mm -hmm. um, there were there were more than one commission member there. We we post agendas for that so that we meet all our public. We 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 publicly post that and invite the public. True. That yeah, yeah, it wasn't recorded. <laughs> it was not recorded. Yeah, it's no, it's not required to record your meetings yeah. um, that aren't regular business. Um, you don't have to record your meetings or take minutes. That's not required. Okay. All right. 
the main thing I think the city does to protect us is they just set their bar high just so that there's no question like it's a it's a it's annoying it can be inconvenient like all those things and I think staff would probably agree with that more than anything because they're the ones that have to figure it out for us all but um but the main thing is we just don't want anything in any of our activity to be questionable and so if that means not hanging out three at a time then that's just how that's just what we do so yeah so it sounds to me like uh kim chrissy and i need to get together we i think we had a pretty do you feel like that chrissy like we have a pretty good discussion and a list we'll get together kind of come up with another list and get that out so that we can kind of at least that doesn't preclude us from also moving forward with the artist and mm -hmm. and getting that work going yep. at the same time, just right. so that it marries up like, okay, now we have the artist and now here's the list right. so that we're not like this doesn't take till next July. Right. And I think too, like having this kind of loose list, even though it might be more than what we actually need, at least you kind of have some properties you can show the artists and right. say, you know, here's examples of the properties that we're probably going to use and um, that kind of thing. So, right. Yeah, I agree. And I think at this point, we could, um, from the list we do have, from what is landmark, we easily give them one commercial, like 740 front, one residential, just because they're a little bit different, um, kind of, you know, see what those look like, give some feedback, see a revision. So we have our list, we're ready to go forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Kim and Andrea, we can communicate and we're going to next meeting time. Yeah, pick another. Yeah. And I would just add moving forward this year is great too. We did get the budget amendment. City Council approved the budget amendment. So it's it's better to, you know, kind of get everything commissioned and paid for this year. If you want to print books, if you want, I mean, we can always roll the budget into next year, but it's never guaranteed that you'll get the rollover. So, you know, spending the money this year is a, a good thing to shoot for. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for input. Yeah. Thanks for sure. all the work you've done on that. Can I bring something any... else up too? Though? With, sure. with the with the artist uh, Satya, uh, I think that's her name. When going to her website, um, she uh, had some in interesting, you know, various um, styles that she had done. Are we going to give guidance um, to her on? The, the kinds of drawing things that we would want drawing because obviously we don't want something that's entirely representational, you know, of a, a building that's just uh, like, you know, an architectural drawing that we might see from Andy Johnson. Um, in one of her drawings, uh, she had a sky that was sort of a Van Gogh, uh, you know, very colorful sky and she could do things like that uh, if we wanted her to. But do, do you have thoughts on uh, instructing her? I think or just let her pick or? I think we're, um, you know, Andrea, you saw the Boulder coloring book, which Gary, you've also seen. Yeah. I think we were, I mean, at least my thought was kind of keeping it more traditional, you know, architectural look, but yeah. Linda's were mentioned too, putting in like, a, you know, the house right now. Um, that you can put the garden into and things like that. So trying to capture sort of the landscaping or the kind of historic feel of it as well. But but Gary, you would have just like a photograph, just uh, entirely representational. So I just I, I just stepped in because I um, as part of her sort of quote, I believe it was her understanding of of the kind of quote that you know and that she was replying to that it would be more or less aligned drawing so with lines I should say so certainly you could do more than that that would probably increase the cost now we did have the budget amendment approved so we do have some of those funds available but you know it just might be more than what might be initially yeah. given here with this quote would be the only thing to keep in mind so um, you know if you wanted if you wanted more we could certainly do that it just might be an increase uh, in price uh, all uh, coloring book drawings are going to be line drawings but the question is if it looks just like uh, you know, came off of uh, a, a 3D, a CAD system uh, drawing of, say, the mercantile uh, building or something. Um, is that what we want or? 
do we want it to be more a little more abstract like in some of her drawings on her website or both well yeah it it won't it won't look i mean in my mind it'll look like kind of the like the bolder one it won't look like a computer did it right i mean it'll well that's kind of my question like, I mean, right, because it's the angle you're picking, like when you look at the architectural, you know, they're like, here's the front elevate, here's the north elevation, the east right. elevate, right, you know, maybe, maybe the artist sets it at a little angle and yeah, there's a tree and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, and she might, I think the artist might also, um, and maybe this is direction too, of maybe giving three different styles of how they might do it. Like maybe something more traditional of just very, um, you know, just the straight architectural or maybe what you're saying, Andy, or sorry, <laughs> Gary, with a little more um, like artistic license, yeah. kind of doing things a little more something, I don't know. I mean, that might be something too of, um, cause we're not, artists and so they might have some things to bring that we might like, oh that's interesting um yeah, that might be something you guys to consider too of offering it up for them to maybe give three different styles of how they might do a coloring page of a structure yeah. well i just wondered about instructions to her for yeah, instance with the grain elevator if it were me i'd throw in a locomotive in the train track right next to it and uh she could do that but you know, we'd have to suggest it probably. Mm -hmm. Just a thought. Right, and then like Kim said, how does that affect the price? Right. Right, right. like, mm. right, so. Yeah, uh, good question. Not quite sure. Well, it's a drawing, so. Yeah. Um, you know, she's not differentiating, I don't think, between simple drawing and more complex drawing. I don't know. Yeah. That could be something where we ask the artist if, if you know, she does accept, then we can kind of, uh, once she does accept, we can ask her to do a couple of different options of her take mm -hmm. and then bring those to the subcommittee and the subcommittee could discuss those kind of first, see what we think and then bring it up if yeah. you'd like. Yeah. That sounds like a good route to do it. Yeah. yeah, you'll get samples from both of them. Is that what we're? Is that the process of like kind of getting a sample uh, before we would actually sign with either of them? Is that the process, or we could do that too? I think, and not to speak, but for the subcommittee was leaning, I think, more towards one artist, but liked the two. So it would be right. if the whole committee would prefer. Let's just go ahead and get examples first, or the subcommittee, or I'm sorry, the whole commission feels um confident with going in one direction i think that's what um you know it would be up to, to you all if which way you'd like did i misspeak that just in case so the subcommittee is basically has already kind of decided on one is that what you're saying correct oh, okay okay yeah i guess um i guess it would be interesting to maybe get a sample of an actual coloring something just because they just to see what their style is. I don't know. Um, or if we, I don't know, maybe that, obviously they say they can do it, but um, yeah, I don't know. Is that, do you all feel confident with just going forward without seeing like a sample of an actual coloring page from them? Does that make sense? Because mm -hmm. neither of them have actually like drawn a coloring page before, but they have like, the one you've selected has experience putting together a coloring book. Mm -hmm. um, but to Gary's point with the style and all that, there could be a lot of interpretation. Um, but if you guys feel confident about it, that's fine too. In uh, doing the um, uh, abstract of the um, project, you, you also question whether they would be landscape or portrait style um, right. drawings. Uh, I know, is there a way to do both in case you wanted to produce uh, plates uh, separately? Because uh, a, a landscape drawing of, well, obviously landscape like the red barn would 
maybe be ideal. Um, it, is there a, a thought to a way to do both? I guess you'd have to shrink it if you put it on the same format of book. I don't know. It's going to be hard to have these discussions right. in there. Yeah. And when we, um, uh, part of the uh, Kim's write up was too that uh, who was going to do the text in different parts. Um, we have a lot of the existing sources now besides uh, Bridget's uh, full reports. Uh, there are the little uh, abstracts that are in the, um, you know, walking map you were just looking at. And um, I and before that Caleb and then before that somebody else had been putting in little write-ups for the Downtown Business Association's newsletter. So we might be able to collect all of those things and, uh, you know, easily come up with some of that text. But uh, I, I, the way it was suggested is that we collaborate on those things or do parts, and that's going to be difficult with the uh, structure we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah, that's... I mean, I don't know. I mean, when I look at the walking map, the descriptions there, I think are fine. I, I mean, I don't think we need to, I mean, we are all volunteers. We need to get this done. I, I don't think we need to like reinvent the wheel. Like if something's been written up, it's clear, it's grammatically correct then that's what we put on the page, right? The trickier piece will be the explanation of our program at the front, mm -hmm. right? That's the piece that, you know, it's our, it's our outreach, like, you know, and maybe we can add, you know, the year that it was landmarked or whatever, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't, I, I don't think we need to, I mean, the, I, I would say the, the, the one, the bolder one kind of, I'd have to look, we'd have to look at the layout too, because like the bolder one I liked, but it was kind of wordy, at, you know, I, I don't know, kind of distracted a little yeah. bit, I thought, um, from the coloring book, it was a little too much. So then I was like, well, yeah, like maybe we'd have to edit it down, but that's better than writing more, right? It's easier to just take what we have and take a few things out for each a sentence or two out for each description that we have on the walking map. If, our, if, blurbs are, our blurbs are pretty short though. Yeah, I think it would fit. I, I I'm just fit fine. I'm thinking of the one that I had like, well, how big was that font and right. proportion? Yeah. To was, yeah. And in their coloring book wasn't an eight by, that wasn't an eight by 11. It was more like, um, I don't know 11. if you guys remember, it was more like 11 by 13 or something, yeah. Yeah, more like a legal size, I would say, than, uh, was right? It horizontal or? Um, it was vertical. It vertical. was portrait. Yeah. yeah, it was portrait okay. and more like a legal size notepad, right? Okay. Um, okay. Which I thought actually was nice. Um, but even then, I was like, yeah, it was the was there a lot of words or was the font big? Mm -hmm. um, so anyway. Um, I think, I think but, it would be helpful to pull from one source ideally primarily like yeah. the one tour just the tone is the same yeah um, you know there's things that are missing again what i was reading those read-ups most of them and all of them identify the architectural style we could put that in you know or try to solidify the date you know pull from other sources to find missing components like that but i think if we have too many authors and writers the the mm -hmm. flow of it the tone of it could be um a bit schizophrenic so right and obviously we don't have this little write-up for uh, for our more recent ones, right. so I think right. what we did was we took the um, the social history and condensed it down into this. I think is how we arrived at this. I can't remember if there was an in between publication that we used, but um, so we would just have to do that for the more new recent ones, and we'd have to like Chrissy said follow that same voice just to make mm -hmm. it. Yeah. So, yeah, I would agree. If we kind of had a standard, like, here's mm -hmm. the information we need to include on every house, um, talk about the year it was built, then talk about who lived there, then talk about the style or some mm -hmm. other 
variation of that, but yeah, right. so it's just kind of. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it'll be um, too hard. Um, and then, yeah, if if we can do it, where um, just a couple of us work on it and we just use a standard kind of verbiage, then if there's only fifteen and most of the information is available. Right, or, and, or Bridget fills in the gaps mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, um, for, for would, the other one. Bridget be willing to look them over for, you know, accuracy yeah. and such. Yeah. It is possible to do those write-ups so they are, are a little more interesting than just the just the facts, ma'am. But, but uh, like the, the house on uh, at Pine and Lafarge was a dairy and uh, they, they supplied the milk to the community. The, the house at, um, at Garfield and Pine, the stone one, those stones were moved individually from Marshall. And uh, sometimes there, there's uh, someone who was involved in the mine riots that, uh, or, or was killed in the mine riots uh, way back. And those, some of those th snippets of history, uh, I think had some interest, but. Oh yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah, that's a good point. Like you can have this, this, and this, and then an interesting fact specific to that house, whether yeah. whatever that interesting fact is, if there is one or two. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll evolve this as we go along, I guess. Yeah. As yeah. we can. It, um, you know, in being on the subcommittee, I'm happy to be a part of whatever that might look like with coming up with these or finding more information. But Gary, if you have access, so, so in that vein, Gary, if you have access to downtown business association write-ups, um, you can yeah. sure procure, procure, get those more easily than I could. Um, maybe send those on to us um, or do yeah, them yourself. That's a good idea. Yeah. Right, because the walking tour ones does, they do add in kind of these snippets of interesting history. Mm -hmm. I sort of assumed when that history is available, but maybe there is more history out there. It's just yeah. in other locations. You know, so if there's some that don't have snippets of interesting history, then we could look to find those if we have resources. Okay. Maybe and you as a sub committee can farm some of those out too, because I'm glad to help with some of them. Um, so I think the downtown dialogue, downtown is actually smaller, more succinct than these. Isn't that right? I mean, I think their blurbs are even smaller than the walking tour. Isn't that right, Gary? Um, I've been writing them for a couple of years, so no, <laughs> they're, they're, a little, they're a little longer, but they're not very long. Okay. So I, I, know. I, I will send those, uh, maybe I'll send them to uh, to Kim and she can send them okay. to the I know originally, I think when, um, I think Deb might have been doing it, I think they were pretty, they were actually smaller than what this was. Oh, okay. So that's fine that you're doing more, but yeah. I think originally they were really small. So that's, if you have more information. Right. On the other side, the social histories um, that are, we have the social histories for every one of these properties. Mm -hmm. And it's everything that Bridget has ever found on the houses. Yeah, they're right? huge, yeah. So, so we already have, we don't really need yeah. to dig too deep. Uh, go back to Bridget and ask for more or try to dig up more because it's already, yeah. she's already done all the work for us. Right. So that's great. So we just have to. Yeah, so again, if there is one proper, they're like, oh, this, this rib seems a little thin. There's not the social history from the others. We can probably get it pretty easily. Um, well, if there's not in the social history, that there's probably not a lot to the house. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because we have everything. So we yeah, so that's something else to think about. And we'll, we can do that in our committee as well. Is you know, there's a house that we like the style or the architectural era, but there's not much known about it at all. Maybe we don't put that in and put one in that has a little more exactly yeah economic history. Yeah, well, it, that's exactly what I think. And Chris was like, remind us when we look at these and we're picking the houses to color that we consider that too. If there is a cool mm -hmm. fact, like right, it was right. the dairy or right. whatever, then, oh, we're like, oh, well that, right, that that's, should win out. That should be the one we pick. Absolutely. Right, when kids and families read this, that draws them in too. Well, this is why yeah. we're preserving these because this, these people lived yeah. here contributed to our economy or, you know, we're immigrants yeah. or yeah. 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 That's perfect. Yeah. That's a great solution. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I think then the only thing we need to maybe talk about a little bit more, unless I'm missing something, is the layout. Um, you know, sounds like it was vertical for the boulder one. Vertical is, I think, more traditional for coloring books. 
Right. That's what I was going to say. It's just more traditional. Yeah. And we could also talk to the artists, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't think we. I wouldn't necessarily think we'd want to mix them, like, because. Yeah. Whichever one isn't made that way, you just end up losing a lot of the image. Um, so I would, I would say just stick to one, and yeah, exactly. let the artists decide. But, um, but my guess too is even because a lot of our houses are very close together, also. So probably that narrow or more narrow view of um, yeah. of portrait is going to be a better fit anyway for most of the houses. If you had to pick one, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where I would lean to right now. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Sounds good. Um, is there anything else, Kim or Andrea, that we are missing we should talk about with the coloring book? I think that's all that was in the packet. I think we've covered it all, kind of. And we have a plan to move forward, I think, right? So, yeah. So probably the narrowing down of the structures might just be looking at the social history and just making sure that they're, I mean, that might weed out some of them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And we'll just, yeah, kind of clean up the list and yep. um, then we can throw that out to you guys for consideration and, um, Maybe get a sample from the artist. Um, so you guys are good if we just kind of do the sample from just the our top artist, and if if we're happy with that, just move forward. Yeah, you guys don't want to see the samples from two two artists, right? Um. I mean, I guess the only thing is if we get the sample and we and you guys are like, oh, we don't like this. Like, can you is there still a way to not use them? That's my only. Like, can you if you so if you like we love this artist, we're good with it. Let's get a sample. And then you're like, oh, this is actually like we're having a really hard time getting what we want from this artist. Like, can is there still room to back and maybe do a different artist? Does that make sense? Because we have two artists right now, yeah. and one you like, yeah. and so we're not even getting a sample from the second one, which is fine, right? But, right. but, but if for yeah, some, I would assume that right, Kim, that that the next step in the process is say, um, you are our top selected artist. We now we're requesting just a sample because okay. we didn't want to waste five artists' time, right? Right, okay. and then. If you would like to can proceed with the, can you provide us a sample? And then if we're not like, oh, we hate it. Okay. I mean, because we really can move on to the next artist, but we don't have That's to, great. you know what I mean? Does that- I can make sure that there's, um, that we're not- to back out. Yeah. Okay, we can still back out. That's great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's all I was checking. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. We don't. We're not going to hire them when and they send us a picture that a uh, <laughs> second grader could have drawn. Right. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah, that's all very good. So, any other comments or questions or things you want to discuss about this before we close this part of our meeting? Good. Okay. So one of the important things too about our meetings is that when we do have discussion, we can talk about this as long as we need to. So we're not, you know, we can be very thorough and very um, long if we need to um, when we have this as a public meeting. So I think that's one of the things to remember too is like this is our time to really dig in and figure it out um, so that we don't have to make separate meetings or feel like we're not having the good discussion that we need to get things done well. So, um, so yeah, so these are, these are the moments and the time that we put in our meeting so that we can get things done like this. So, all right. Yeah, I lost my meeting notes.
All right. So our next is um, discussion and direction for our plaque presentations. All right. So, um, and thank you everyone for all that discussion on the coloring book. That was really great and, and really helpful. And I'm, I think it's, it's coming together nicely. I'm getting really excited about that project. So um, thank you for that. And then with the, with the plaque. So, so I wanted to bring it up at this meeting and, you know, you have that, that memo in your packet. So at this point in, in sort of the combination between last year being COVID and they're, they're not being able to be a, a meeting or a plaque presentation in which you handed out those who had landmarked. Um, and then in, in conjunction with this year of, of missing May, um, I just wanted to see what the group thought and see if we if we wanted to talk through kind of a plan of how to do another plaque presentation. So that's so the memo outlined a couple options and certainly it's not all. We could certainly talk about something else tonight, but we could we have um, basically 12 you know bronze plaques at this point to give out between the years. So it's quite a bit. Now, of course, you could always continue to wait until next May, but I think some people would really like to get their plaques. So that's the only reason I, I've brought up some of the ideas that were in the memo. And so only to go a little bit more and, 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 and let you all discuss, but some of the questions in the memo to, to kind of go over that again would be some things to think about is if you wanted it, uh, when you wanted it of the year, so we could, you know, it, take advantage of the summer weather and continue for it to be outside, or would you like it to be maybe later, you know, just as an, as an example, at the end of the year, sometime in December, um, and then it'd have to be inside, so we'd want to think about that. And then the other thing um, to just to get a little bit of direction on tonight, too, is, is certainly, um, you know, mainly being inside or outside, because that could help direct if we break it up into multiple days or not. So just to step back and give an example, if we wanted to do it outside, um, you know, that with 12, that would just be difficult and it might be all, you know, day long to walk around and sort of give them out. So just something to think about. I wanted to see what the group thought, see what your preferences were, see you, how you wanted to maybe do this ceremony this year. Um, you know, as we're easing out of COVID, we're kind of out of restrictions in a way we haven't been in, in 18 months. So, so that's, I'll leave it at that. I'm certainly, I don't have you know, too many answers. I'd love to just kind of whatever you guys would like to do. I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, we have we have quite a few plaques to give out. So I just want to make sure we took some time to see what that would look like. So Chair Haley, um, I wasn't able to attend the first year I was on the commission, then we didn't have it last year. So can you kind of describe to us like what happens, how long it takes, what what usually goes on? I was going to ask is I think Gary might be the, Gary and I are the only ones who have actually been to one. Yeah. Um, as that was members. just one plaque to one place, wasn't it? Um, as I recall, yeah, place on May. right? Yeah, um, so what we've done in the past, we always do it in May for preservation month, and we generally have like two to five, I would say, a year that we've had this little plaque ceremony. And so we basically just take a Saturday morning and we um, start at one house and we have the mayor and commission members and the property owner and any neighbors or community members that wanna be there. And we have a little ribbon and giant scissors. And um, you know, the, so we have someone speaks like maybe the mayor does one or um, staff or whoever, or the property owner, whoever wants to talk and just say something simple and then we cut and then that's pretty much it so every ceremony the actual ceremony piece is maybe 15 minutes like okay. it's enough to give the plaque to maybe talk about the house a little bit to cut the ribbon to take pictures and then we move on to the next house so there's like a 10 minute intermission between each house as everyone makes their way to the next property okay we repeat the process so with 12 properties, this is what Kim and I were saying, <laughs> is that that would be a really long day. Um, and so, and obviously, um, you know, we didn't do it in May. Um, it would have been horrible even if we could have done it because it was so rainy. Um, but so we are, um, so dividing it up would probably be fine. I think there is, so this is the discussion that um, is interesting that Kim brought up is, 
you know, if we had it inside or a central location, we could do more at a time quicker. It'd be a little more efficient because the timely part is moving from house to house. Um, sometimes it's walkable, but sometimes it's not. Um, and so, um, but there is a lot to be gained in doing the ceremony at the actual house also, um, because it does like people driving by or in the neighborhood can see it happening or they might stop and participate or whatever. So there is a lot to be said about actually doing it in person at the property. So um, yeah, so it's a really simple, it's really simple but complicated as far as the logistics of having multiple properties that we're going to. But with 12, we could easily break it into like four, three property ceremonies and just space it out like, you know, even a month at a time, like do one in July, August and September before it gets cold or in the fall when it's nice, do like August, September, October or something, you know? So. Yeah, I like that idea, those months too, August, September and October. Um, and then I'm wondering too, if we don't have to give them out in the order that we granted them, we could maybe cluster it. Right. It's like, oh, these four are together. Let's do these. And then, then we'll do these. And then the last one, we're going to have to hike around or drive around because they're all over or something like that. Um, and I yeah. think that's, I mean, I would appreciate just doing one, uh, you know, one Saturday morning a month. Um, as opposed to one entire Saturday or. Right. Um, and then if there are people from the city council as well, they could maybe divide and conquer as well. Like, you know, I think we have two former mm -hmm. historic preservation commissioners on the, on, on the city council plus the mayor. So, right. you know, maybe they could each do one. Mm -hmm. Um and we could bang it out and um, think they need to be honored. And I would prefer they be honored at their property. I mean, that's the whole point. Right. Um, and so I think the other piece was if we want to do it on a weekend, like on a Saturday um, morning, that's how we've done it in the past. Um, one thing I was talking to Kim about, especially in the summer, um, a lot of people are more home and kind of out and about on a week night, like a Wednesday night. Um, they might think that's kind of fun or even um, doing it like street fair night, like early, right before street fair or something. We could even tag it in there or something. That's probably not a good idea, but just something. Um, yeah a weeknight might be fine. And so um, kind of thinking about our schedules or our just commitment level of what we'd rather do. And we all, that's the other thing is, I mean, there's only five of us, so we do have to do more, but we don't all have to be at every one of them either right. if we do four months, you know, and, or three months. So I mean, that's the other piece. Um, but also just the general feel of, do you think we'd have a better um attendance doing on a weekend versus a week night um okay. i feel like once school starts i feel like people are more grounded on the weekends but in the summer like weekends can just be even for our property owners like we might have property owners that aren't even going to be home for the ceremony so that's the other piece we have to factor in is figuring out when our um, landmark um owners can do it yeah I, I like also like the idea of breaking up the 12 ceremonies, the 12 plaques into two or three different ones. Um, and I do think a weeknight is a good idea. I do. I think, you know, people travel a lot and are out and about um, in the summer months, on the weekends. So having two or three options or would give people just more choice, um, flexibility in what to attend. Mm -hmm. It'll be difficult to poll the uh, uh, people receiving the plaques, but there may be some people who just have no interest in um, any celebration at all that are, you know, 
perfectly happy with the, the property being landmarked, but uh, not wanting a ceremony anyway. Do you, um, in the past, do you find that most property owners did want the ceremony or? As I was going to say is I don't, I think all of our property owners have participated and been happy about it. It's like I said, it's, it's such a simple thing and they, mm. one of our pro previous property owners, one of the things, one of the reasons we did it was they said it was so anticlimactic. They would literally have to go to city hall and like get it from the front desk and they'd be like, Oh, let me find it. And they'd be like, here's your plaque. I'll get a box. I'd be like, mm. unwrap. it was just very, just kind of not exciting. Yeah. Um, and so they were most of our property owners have been really excited about it and it's a way to like you know they can like talk about their neighbors it's kind yeah. of a show, like it's showy and it's exciting and um it's right at their house so it's pretty yeah. easy <laughs> yeah. we had one property owner that like invited us all in and had like snacks and you know <laughs> it's not definitely not a, an obligation but it was they were very excited to show us the inside of the house too and have us you know celebrate with them so yeah uh, it's very possible that there might be some people that don't want to participate but we haven't run into that yet so let's do it on halloween yeah <laughs> everybody's out yeah exactly yeah. um and we can also Go ahead. I think a, I think a weekday night is a great idea too, and you know, maybe later in the week, like a Wednesday or a Thursday, um, mm -hmm. because our downtown is bustling and people right. are constantly looking places for park and walking around and to be out on a weeknight when people could see this. I think this is great promotion for our program. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And we can put up little signs and advertisements too ahead of time, just so people can make their way over there or whatever too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like maybe not July, maybe August, September, October. Would y'all? That was just from Andrea. Um, anyone else have? Oh, we could do July too. Yeah, and get on it. I mean, if we have property owners and we're going to do it in the evening, we could do that. I think later in July might just be a little easier and only just to get some of the logistics going mm -hmm. in terms of making sure we get a good grouping and then making sure that they can all attend. That would be my only concern. Um, yeah. But but later July, you know, given that's a month, should, shouldn't be a problem in that vein. So that's the only comment I wanted to make on that. Yeah. Okay. And would you, if it was, are we leaning towards three different events? And if so, would you, Kim, sort of reach out to those 12, um, what was that? Yeah. Uh, four to, you know, all those, those 12 different people. And so there's this many slots this day at this time, this many slots this day at this time, this many slots this day at this time, you know, sort of all of a sudden have eight people at one and, right. you know, that wouldn't work so well. Yeah. Yeah. Chair Haley mentioned maybe four nights of three, which I think would work. I was take, going back through the addresses and I think I think we could probably do three of four. I don't think would push it too much, just given their geography. For instance, I mean, yeah. you know, the Kochi and the Stecker house are, are next door to each other. So those ones are pretty easy. Oh, yeah. um, but I, I would think any more than that probably any more than three. Would, would be too, yeah. too many. But I think four in a night would be doable given where they are. If that Does that answer? Does that help? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, well, and I think too, the question is, do we... Do we group them based on when the homeowners are available or do we group them based on their geography? Does that make sense? Um, well, yeah, I think I think geography might be the first place to start. I would think trying to get them as close and as easy to walk to each other as possible. And then if you are all comfortable, then if we have to maybe walk two blocks instead of one to make sure we get four in a night, for instance, yeah. if everyone's okay with that. But I think if it's amenable, I'd probably start with geography just okay. to say what's the closest and what can we do? And then, yeah, if we need to kind of play a little bit of chess, we can play a little bit of chess. That's great. Yeah, because usually we dictate we usually dictate when the ceremony is like it's May, the sec, you know, the second Saturday in May every year. Right. So we've always kind of dictated when it is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe we've given them more notice, but right. um, and, yeah, so I don't, I think it's fine if we just, just give it. Yeah. And I mean, if they say, Oh, that absolutely won't work for me. Then maybe we say, okay, well, we'll do yours May of 2022 then and just throw them in the 2022 May pile. 
or another weekend or another weekend if it's they're close by or whatever so yeah we did have one property that um was they were out of town and they couldn't yeah. do it so we did it anyway they just weren't there so i mean that's the other option too <laughs> yeah, yeah. they still got their plaque and whatever and we still had pictures and documentation whatever but yeah. they weren't actually there so i mean that's a possibility um yeah. but if we also have the multiple weekends if we cluster and then for whatever reason certain people can't we might be able to finagle it where everyone yeah. gets it so um there's probably more flexibility with having multiple nights and that's helpful so from what i'm hearing in the note i took is start with geography try to get everyone there you know and then if we can bounce it around to get 100 percent attendance we can but it sounds like if not everybody can make it every time, that's sort of okay in terms of past events sort of thing. Okay. Or but yeah, with more than one night, it makes it a lot easier. Right. Or if they really want to be here and we can move yeah. another. Um, and then, so we'll shoot for end of July, but if for some reason that becomes a, too complicated, complicated, we can push it to August. So, yeah. and then either a Wednesday or a Thursday night. Is that what everyone is saying? Or yeah, that works. We could, we could start with a weeknight or start with a weekend. Like, do we, does the committee have a preference in July if it's a weeknight or a weekend? And I guess how many, are we considering three, right. right? So two mornings and then one night or two nights and one morning? Um, for the, like one Saturday morning and two weeknights that you're saying? Yeah, yeah, or vice versa, like what is, I mean, I've never done this, so I'm no. um, whatever, whatever you guys think. I would, I would say by September, you, you're probably needing to do it Saturday morning just because there won't be as much light. Right. Right. People might, I mean, it would be hard for me to get off work, get in back to Louisville and show up maybe to do two hours worth of walking around before it got dark. So. If we were going to do a Saturday morning, I would pick the September yeah, and then July and August or whatever, somewhere in there. Those two, we could do them still in the evening, I would think. I think that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. And then also and then, gives people like homeowners options too. If a weekend versus a weeknight works better, we can say, well, if a weekend is good, you can do it September and yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Chair Haley. I was only going to bring up just dates real quick, just to start those with July, at least, since that's creeping. So yep. exactly, so the 21st of July is the third full week, and that's a Wednesday. The 22nd is a Thursday. But then there is a one more week left in July, so there's the 28th and the 29th are Wednesday, Thursday. So does maybe the 28th or 29th sound okay to everyone? That gives us, you know, kind of the full capacity of July. Um, yeah. So those 28th and 29th, Wednesday, Thursday, if that rings any bells to anyone as our first go. Yeah, that would be my preference. I actually have to miss another meeting because I'm out of town that third week of July. So hopefully we'll, you guys will still have a quorum, but I won't be at that meeting that, um, I think it's the 19th. So I wouldn't, not only would I miss the meeting, I would miss the ceremony. So if we could push it back um. to last week of July, I would prefer that. And I'll actually be gone that Monday too, on the 19th. Mm. So we might not have a quorum. Um, the 29th enough. becomes the band in the park thing, and maybe that's good or bad. I don't know if you could combine it with that. At community park? Yeah, those Thursday nights. Yeah. Yep. 28th, 29th looks good to me. I just want to decide which Wednesday or Thursday, but. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe 29th, just since people might already be out and about. And then it's a little closer to, fr it's Friday Junior, as some people like to call it, yes. um, being Thursday. So. Um, <laughs> I've never heard that. Yeah, <laughs> I, did, I didn't make it up. I stole that. But. I think you did. <laughs> I'm going to start using it starting this week. All right. 
<laughs> okay, so I can maybe start aiming towards the 29th then, and, and if that sounds good to everyone. Okay, I'm seeing some head nods. Okay. Um, I, just, I had a question about how this is advertised to the general public who might want to attend. And then also, if we do anything, like if we as a committee then ever report out, like advertise to the community that these have been done. Like, are we, is somebody there taking pictures during the event? Does it go into, you know, go into the city's website or anything like that? Um, seems like op two opportunities to get community members in the know um, of what's going, what we're doing on this committee. I want to say, I th think either Lauren or Amelia were taking pictures. Is that right? They have uh, yep, we had. Yeah, she would take pictures of everybody like lined up with the uh, with the plaque and everything um, in front. And I don't know if we published it anywhere other than just use it kind of internally or that kind of thing. Um, if I don't it know would what we've be... done in the. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I don't know what we've done in the past, but we do have a monthly email newsletter and a quarterly mailed newsletter that goes to all residents. And so I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't put it in the next mail's newsletter. So it really into both. We could probably have an outreach in both of those um, as soon as the, you know, once we get some good stories and pictures, we could put it in both of those. Okay. And then as far as advertising it in the first place, I mean, it is noted as a public meeting. That's probably one of the easiest advertisements. Um, but there's probably another way. I know Lauren also used um, the Instagram account a lot to post before and after um, advertising <laughs> and afterwards. So, but I'm sure there's other city things that we can put a little blurb about. To attend or whatever so yeah well you know we i think what you know we do have an outreach specialist on the city staff now that's you know a fairly new position um so we can ask her about um how to advertise okay. see what ideas she has as well sure. um you know we certainly have a lot of email blast groups that you know people have signed up on to get email blasts for different things that could be a good way but we'll we'll check with gloria our uh, outreach specialist and anything that makes sense, we'll advertise it once it gets scheduled. Awesome. Great, thank you. I think that's great feedback if everyone feels good. And then what I'll, I'll start lumping them together sort of geographically reaching out and then I'll, I'll um, um, can see kind of where we're at with the, for the 29th, see how that looks. And then, um, so Chair Haley, you said you wouldn't be there, or would you be there the 29th or not the preceding week? Not the 19th. Not the 19th, oh, so the 29th. Is yeah. there, and then are all commissioners interested in this first one? Is there anyone that might just wanna to wait to the next one? I'm only thinking for public notice, just making sure I get that going. Um, I'd like to at least attend on the 20th or 29th. I don't know if I'd like to speak just yet since I've never seen one in practice. <laughs> but I'd be happy to in the next ones. <laughs> Attendance requests only. Yep, you're okay. fine. <laughs> I'm seeing mostly head nods. So, okay, that's perfect. I just wanted to make sure. So that's great. Well, then that's all That's all I have on, on that. So thank you all very much. I'm, I'm okay. excited to, to pass out some. I have a whole stack of them ready to go. Um, so I'm very excited. <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So that's good to get going. It feels like we're coming back to normal again. All right. Um, this is staff again. So our next item is items from staff. So just updates. And actually, I, I won't pull it up only because there were no updates from subcommittees or any of that sort of um, um, news for this month. If you saw in the packet, just to keep in, it's something to keep in mind. Um, you know, we'll 
we'll see how July shakes loose, but July 13th is the city council meeting in which they'll be talking about going back to in-person. So that's kind of the only update I wanted to bring up. So as of now, we'll just kind of plan on virtual. That might change given their direction and I'd imagine we'll probably start in person, but we'll kind of see what city council goes with and then go from there. Um, and I can certainly update you as I know, and, and we have a better idea. So I'm sure people are wondering about virtual or not, but I just, I don't know too much yet, but we'll have more soon. Right. So that's just about it there. Okay. All right, and then um, discussion items, or I'm sorry, updates from commission members. Any updates from anyone? No? All right, and then um, discussion items for future meetings. So we do want to keep looking at our historic structure assessment um, presentations. But anything else that we want to add to our future meetings that we need to keep going on? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know if this is the time to bring it up, but since Chair Haley and I will both be gone July 19th, we're gonna have to move that meeting. So I just wasn't on my radar. I, I've known about that and I'm sorry, it wasn't on my, I should have notified. Right, and same. So um, Rob, correct me if I'm wrong, but if the other three folks can be there, we should meet quorum because it's majority of, it's like three is still majority of five. Oh, okay. So I'm going to send an, e I can send an email or I can ask you now if, if um, Gary, Keith and Chrissy, you know for sure, or I can just send a follow up email. So who would run the meeting? Because <laughs> we're sharing. Yeah. Uh, Are you <laughs> let, let's check the rules of procedure real quick too. I don't know if you need four or if you can actually have a meeting with three. We could probably look that up real quick here. Yeah, I did. that in like three minutes. Give us a few minutes. Oh, if yeah. Anything else to discuss? We'll look at. I'll pull up the rules of procedure. I don't know if Kim, if you know where they are. I'm just glad you caught that, Andrea, because it's like looking time. at the bylaws right now. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. taking a look really quick. Yeah. So it looks like a majority of the members shall constitute a quorum for conducting business is the language in the bylaw. So it doesn't have a particular number. Right. So it, I think the question is, is that a, a majority of the, I mean, this isn't a full board, mm. right? So yeah. is it the majority of the number of board members you're supposed to have or that are actually appointed? And I think that's, um, I don't know what you've done in the past because I know this has come up. Um, I think on quorums, three is a very low number for a quorum, I guess I would say. Um, I think it might mean the, uh, I, I don't know what it means actually. It might be worth clarifying, uh, Chair Haley, if you, how we've interpreted that in the past. Do you know? I don't know. That... Um, we could check with Nick, the city attorney too. This yeah, might be one we need to check with them. Because I'm pretty sure we've never gone lower than three. Like I was. Have you had meetings with three? I, I had a meeting with three. Yeah. But I could be wrong. We can look. We'll probably have to look into it. Honestly, I don't know that we. Yeah, we don't need to answer it tonight. Um, Why don't we just move the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we could try to reschedule it. That would be. So I can send out an email that both looks into this question and then also asks for other dates in July, mm -hmm. if that would be easier for everybody so you don't have to look at your calendars right this instant. Um, so I can do that. Okay. Does yeah. that work for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Thanks, Amelia. That's helpful. Do we know if we have um, any public hearings? We don't have any as of certain at this time. Okay, that makes me feel better, right? Because homeowners are waiting and right, oh my God, right. they got to wait an extra week or they got to get their act together a week sooner. It's like, oh, sorry. So yeah. that makes me feel better. Okay, good. Right. We do have the coloring book thing too. Like if that's something we want to keep going with. If we miss if we miss a meeting altogether, that's pushes us out. Oh yeah, my preference would be to reschedule it if we can't do yeah, right. Like, um, but I understand that that's not convenient for members of the commission. Right, totally. Well, so I don't want to mess right. anybody else up. Yeah, totally. Okay. All right, so we'll be looking for um, rescheduling email updates on the coloring book list. And we'll just go from there. Kind of, kind of related to that, to what business we have to, uh, to conduct. I, I was surprised that uh, there weren't any uh, probable cause uh, requests or landmarking requests. Is, is that right? I, I thought with the uh, note that went out to um, property owners, it'd probably be a, a groundswell, but maybe that didn't happen, huh? That's there, correct. There yeah, I, I'm with you. But yep, nobody, nobody just happened to time out to, to this month. But uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll see. We'll see a whole bunch in okay. in August. But there are some discussions going on because I guess that has to happen with you before the formal request. Yeah, I did have a number of people actually call or, or mostly call or email regarding the postcard directly yeah. and asking some information about, you know, the process in general. Right. Um, and certainly we've, you know, certainly talked to folks who have gone through probable cause that you've already seen that are, you know, then yeah. talking about next steps. We just sort of in terms of this month haven't had anybody land on being ready with those. So, but we've, yeah, the postcard did get, um, I'm glad you mentioned that. We did get some good feedback, some direct calls, some direct questions based on the postcard being mailed out. So I'm, okay. I'm glad you did ask about that. Well, that's good news. Thanks. Um, might just be a little lull, summer lull maybe. No lull, just come pouring in in September. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so we have no other items. So if anyone wants to make a motion to adjourn, we can. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a Aye. good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. -bye.